So if you didn't already notice, Android 15 has arrived for Pixel devices with more phones expected to be updated in the coming months. But here are some features that we think you should enable or change right away to improve, secure and enhance your Android 15 experience. Before we do that though, if you want the latest Android and Pixel content, then why not consider subscribing to 9to5Google here on YouTube? We'd really love to have you and part of our growing community. And if you want exclusive content, including behind the scenes videos, exclusive wallpaper packs, and much more on top of that, then check out our channel memberships options by clicking or tapping the join button. I think it's a pretty fair offering for the price points we have. So theft protection is technically not tied to Android 15 per se, but we think you should instantly activate this if you haven't done so already. In basic terms, this should be super helpful if someone to work, go out and sadly snatch your phone. What it does is it works by using device sensors, Wi-Fi and smart device connections to work out if someone has ripped your phone from your hands and scampered away. As soon as that is detected, your device will lock itself and lock the screen automatically. You can use some of the other tools with this function to remotely lock, locate your device using Find My Device or erase it to be extra safe if it does sadly happen to you. It's not a perfect solution as thieves definitely know how to bypass some of these admittedly basic protections to factory reset phones. Some limitations aside though, this is still useful for protecting on-device files and content if the worst happens and it's definitely worth activating right now if you haven't done so already. If you do want a better experience with on-device vibration-based feedback for things like notifications, then the new adaptive vibration toggle is also worth paying attention to. Rather than having one vibration strength in all situations, after updating to Android 15, the on-device sensors and microphone are used to determine sound levels where your phone is placed. In theory, device vibration on hard surfaces like tables will therefore be less pronounced. On other, device, other places like a soft couch cushion, for instance, the vibration strength will increase to help notify you better. Google states that no data is ever recorded, but you must determine if you're comfortable with these sensors being utilized. But I do think this is another nice addition that will help you find out or work out if you have incoming notifications in a lot more places. Private space has been added as well in Android 15. I think this is a valuable feature for users who prioritize privacy and want to create a secure environment for your sensitive apps and data. By enabling private space, you can effectively safeguard your personal information, financial data, or even work-related files from unauthorized access. This feature is particularly useful if you have dual work or personal phone numbers and want to maintain a better work-life balance on that one device. It also allows you to isolate work-related apps in a separate password-protected space, minimizing those distractions and enhancing your overall productivity. Additionally, private space adds an extra layer of security just making it harder for hackers to breach your device and gain access to that sensitive information. The dedicated space simplifies the management and access of private apps, just making it easy to find them and use them when you do need to and when you don't need to. If you value privacy and want to take proactive steps to protect that data, I think enabling private space in Android 15 is a worthwhile consideration. So to get the best experience while gaming on your smartphone, you might also want to use a new disable default frame rate for games toggle in the developer options to eke out a little more performance, which is especially important if you have a 120 hertz or higher refresh rate display, even a 90 hertz display for that matter. So depending on the game, it might be limited to lower frame rates, which can look choppy or on a screen with a higher refresh rate. By disabling this, the system allows your games to potentially run at that highest rate, depending on some other prerequisites. And therefore it does mean you will have a better time. I definitely think this is one to enable if you are a hardcore mobile gamer. Lockdown mode has also been around for a while in Android for quite a long time actually, but it's even more secure now here in Android 15 because some of the changes to how it works. So if you have lockdown mode enabled, you're adding an extra layer of security as the feature now prevents USB-C access, ADB commands, and more on top of that. So in tandem with that new theft protection feature, it means you can fully protect your device so that when you're not actively using your phone, just enable lockdown mode and a few chances, or there are fewer chances for nefarious actors to get into your phone or pull sensitive information. May seem like overkill, but if you are out and about, especially if you're a tourist, this is one thing I would go and do straight away. Although this option might not technically be applicable to everyone, if you live in a region where Google Wallet isn't all that useful, Android 15 has a new feature that lets you change the default wallet application on your device. It means you can set up any supported payment application or disable the function entirely if you prefer, if you're worried about using NFC payments and someone swiping or trying to swipe your phone and therefore make payments on the go. If you don't want to choose this, again, I would go in, change the application settings that you need to, set it to the banking application you want, or again, disable if you're not using mobile payments 
on your phone. So this is one for the regular Pixel 8 and 8a owners out there. Do you remember when Gemini Nano was limited to the Pro models? Well, that changed quite a while back, but you will need to adjust a setting to access this on your phone. You don't technically need Android 15 to enable this, all you have to do is just head to developer options, search for AI core, and then activate enable on device Gen AI features. You will need to do this if you want things like summarize in Google Recorder, better magic compose suggestions, and even better talkback audio descriptions. We highly recommend enabling this if you haven't done so already and you want to access some of these functions that I've just mentioned. You probably worked out there are lots of new privacy controls in Android 15 and they go way beyond what was available in Android 14, but the send device name feature is something to change right away for an even more security when you're out and about connecting to Wi-Fi networks. By adjusting this setting, it means that your device name will be hidden when connecting to specific Wi-Fi networks. It's another one of those little added features we should definitely think you should go and do straight away as soon as you've updated. One of the most frustrating changes in Android 15 is that when you activate or access Bluetooth settings now, the function works a little bit differently as it won't stay deactivated indefinitely. Instead, it will reactivate itself after 24 hours unless you make a change to the setting. What you need to do is just tap that automatically turn on tomorrow toggle if you do want Bluetooth to stay off, I'll leave it enabled if you don't mind it coming back on and reconnecting to any previously paired devices. It's worth noting that doing this can affect some systems like Find My Device, but if you don't want your device connecting to Bluetooth without your knowledge or after its preset period and get frustrated by it, just go ahead and do this within the Bluetooth settings options. There's also one neat new quick settings tile called Hearing Devices that I think is a great accessibility option that even adds some quick access to for auto audio related functions baked into Android 15 that you might want to use. It's designed to quickly pair with hearing aids and similar devices, but there are actually quick settings for live caption and live transcribe, which might be the most useful for anyone without a hearing impairment. And I do think this is one of those options that you just want to add to your quick settings panel, as even if you don't use it, it's there in case you ever happen to need it. So from a pure security perspective, which is definitely one of the focuses of this video, this is one setting in Android 15 to leave disabled. However, in sometimes you may need or may want to connect to web networks, so use web security on Wi-Fi in specific circumstances. In that respect, I do think it's nice to be able to at least toggle the feature on or off as you need it. So what you need to do here is go into Wi-Fi security and settings, and there will be a toggle here to allow connection to web networks. I do think, as I mentioned, leave this disabled, but again, you may encounter some older security or really old Wi-Fi routers out there. You may need to enable this to connect to it, but I would say for the vast majority of people out there, leave it disabled and give yourself an extra layer of Wi-Fi security. So those are a few settings we think you might want to tweak to get the most security, the most accessibility out of Android 15 when your device does get the update either now or later in the future. Let us know what you're using most in Android 15 though down in the comments sections below. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. And then a big thanks to our channel members on screen now. True legends. Thanks for watching though, and I will speak to you later.